life is a practice. Everything we do, you're either getting more addicted or less addicted. That's life. Now, it used to be in the terrible old days, you didn't get addicted to anything. <laughs> you couldn't. Because you didn't have anything long enough to get addicted to it. <laughs> One day you had food, the next month you didn't. One day you had a house, next you didn't. Here you have shoes, then you don't have shoes. You could not get too comfortable with anything, and you had to be accepting of the fact that I may have to do without it. And that was so awesome about our grandparents. They were okay. Today they don't have food, the next day they don't have drink, the next day they don't have a bed, then they don't have a house, then they don't have a country. <laughs> and, and, they, and they flowed with it. Because that's what life is. Sometimes you have, sometimes you don't. But to get stuck on, that's, that's just not life. So for ourselves, for our children, for our future, for our friends, for the, don't, don't get so overly focused on the addiction. Start taking control of the rest of your life. And just like we would say to a person who comes in, my sister is marrying a guy, what should I do? What should you do? Tell, tell her to light candle Shabbos. No, but she's marrying a guy. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to win that argument. Tell her to light. Where's the mezuzah on her door? I had this experience one time at a, at a cocktail party. You may have heard the story already. In the middle of a crowded room, fundraiser, or whatever, I'm standing there in the middle of the room, and from behind me, this shrill voice says, Rebbe, my, daughter, my son is marrying a, a shikse. Talk to him. I turn around, this little, tiny little lady is standing there with her son. And the whole room heard this. Everybody turns around. And I thought, this poor guy is going to be so embarrassed. He wasn't. He just stood there saying, I said, you're, you're marrying an Andrew? He said, yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't know enough to be embarrassed, you know. So I, I, took, I took the cue from him, and I went with it. I said, oh, so you're going to be the Jew in the family. He says, I guess so. I said, so if they have any questions about Judaism, you'll explain it. He said, yeah. I said, do you, do you know enough to be able to answer their questions? He says, what is there to know? And he, he was sincere. He said, what is, what is there to know? I said, well, five books of Moshe and 20 books of Nevi'im and about 60 volumes of Gemara and a thousand customs. He says, oh. <laughs> he had no idea. I said, you know what would be a great idea? Before you get married, no, 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 the wedding was going to be the next year or something. Whatever. I said, before you get married, go to yeshiva for two months. Learn something so you can answer their questions like a mensch. He said, that's a great idea. <laughs> now, ordinarily, if he hadn't had that attitude, you know, that like calm, you know, like nonchalant, I would have said, you know, yeah, it's not a marriage. You marry a non-Jew. This is not called a marriage. According to Taylor, you're not even going to be married. <laughs> what will I have accomplished? Fine. So you're going to do that Aveda. Now, can we talk about other mitzvahs? Well, that's it. There's one Aveda, and, and that's the only issue in the world. So what do you say to somebody who's going to marry a non-Jew? You say, where are your film? Where's your mezuzah on the door? Why are you eating chazer? Well, I'm going to marry a non-Jew. All right, so you're not a tzaddik. But you're still a Jew. And the same thing with addictions. We get so hung up on on that one aspect of our lives. I mean, with some justification, because it's ruining the rest of your life. But you're letting it. 
maintain a grip on the rest of your life instead of trying to solve this particular problem. And as the rest of your life gets healthier, you'll be capable of. And that's what Hasidus says, stop fighting the darkness, increase the light. An addiction is a darkness. So what are you going to do? Of course, you have to take the, the treatment, go for the, for the whatever. But don't make that your identity or your whole life or the only issue in your life. No matter how bad things are, you have to remain a mensch. And you can. A mensch is a mensch. You can even talk about your problems like a mensch. Even the fact that we're sitting here talking about it like a mensch means that it is possible. So Rosh Hashanah is a time, at Rosh Hashanah, what are we supposed to be thinking? We're supposed to be thinking, how in control am I of my life? What, what is a, a good New Year's resolution? A New Year's resolution means, what other part of my life can I be in charge of? Can I take control of? I've been neglecting uh, my kashrus, so I'm going to take better control. I haven't checked my mezuzahs all these years, and I haven't checked. Take control. And that means I'm not addicted to me. So now, when the davening on Rosh Hashanah, think of these words. Avinu malkeinu ein lonu melech elo You know what that means? I'm not addicted. <laughs> that's what it means. I have only one boss, and that's you. Nothing else dictates to me. I'm not addicted to anything else. And that's even when you're not addicted. <laughs> so even on top of, in addition to, every other kind of treatment and every other kind of cure, you still have to have chassidus. Because you can become addicted to the cure. As long as you're addicted to yourself, you'll be addicted to whatever self. So for a couple of years, you come to the AA meeting and say, Hi, I'm Bob, I'm an addict. And for the next couple of years, you come to you and say, Hi, I'm Bob, I'm a recovering addict. Anything else to your life 